Bridget, and I'm a huge Marvel fan. However, I haven't seen most of the films since they came out in theaters. There's a few here and there that I've watched again, but I haven't actually watched all of the films over again, like in a row. And that's not to say that like you need to do that. Like I've seen all of the movies. It's not like I'm missing anything, but there was an idea in my mind. What if you just watched all of the movies in a row in 50 hours? Now that idea might sound crazy to you. It sounds crazy to me. Over the next 50 hours, I'm planning on watching every single Marvel movie in the MCU in a row with minimal breaks. So this is gonna be a lot. Obviously I had to vlog my experience because that's what you do. I wanted to make a video explaining my emotions as I go throughout this thing. I'm probably gonna go a little crazy towards the end because I will have been up for a number of hours. However, I am excited to try this. It's gonna be kind of chaotic. So here we go. Roll the footage. Iron Man 1. I've been there. <laughs> Iron Man. R.I.P. Jensen. <laughs> I'm not crying, you're crying. Prove that Tony Stark has a heart. What a scene! Iron Man! The tea is piping hot. I forgot that he met with the other people. <gasps> this is so much tea! Movie 1 is done and it's 11.54 and I'm already kind of tired. It, it's fine. It's fine, right? Some notes about what I thought about Iron Man after watching it for the first time in like 10 years. I love Jarvis. Pepper is an icon. R.I.P. Yinsen, he was a star. I forgot how bad Obadiah was, but honestly, like, what a great villain. He did a fantastic job. Just shook me how terrible he was. And I thought the effects in this film were really good. Like, obviously, all Marvel movies are known for effects. Dummy, throughout the film, was my favorite. Phil, I, I love seeing him. He's great. I am Iron Man. What an iconic line. The end credit scene with Sam L. Jackson. Wow, way to start off. I'm a big fan. I tried to draw Iron Man and it didn't really work out. I haven't seen the Hulk in a while and I just remember it being bad, but also like, it's been a hot second. So maybe it's better than I thought. I had forgotten how long these opening credits were. I am an artiste. <laughs> This one is already less good. The blood effect, oh my god, it's terrible. He didn't know the Portuguese word for angry, so he said hungry. You won't like me when I'm hungry. Ah. Stanley! Now that I'm watching this running chase, how does running not force him to turn into the Hulk? Because doesn't that get your blood pressure up? And isn't that what causes him to change? Is getting his heart rate up? Like, Running does that. Why has he not changed yet? That's the question. Here he goes. Does he have to buy a new watch every time? That kind of sucks. I mean, his whole, his whole thing sucks. Poor Bruce. You're telling me she hasn't changed her password? I know for a fact universities make you change your password. Is this why? Because they don't want some guy breaking in? I mean, yeah, that makes sense. But still. The T. I forgot that her dad was the general and she just screamed it. And I'm like, T. Hulk smash. Look at that, those stretchy pants is still there. Remember how she and her boyfriend like never actually broke up, but like, here we are. He says he can't get excited. So can he never have sex again? This doctor guy is really out here being the worst when he was originally such a good person. <sighs> People can be terrible. Bruce jumping out of the plane. Seems like he has a passion for that. I just finished the Hulk. I thought it was interesting when it starts because I always for some reason believed it started like before he became the Hulk and like showed his transition but that is all within like the three minutes of credits at the beginning so that's wild okay so the effects not great but like I guess they were okay especially for the time the doctor guy he was really out here just trying to do the worst I thought it was strange that the abominable was able to immediately talk once he transformed and then Hulk 
only said like three words the whole movie and especially considering he is the scientist i was like why hasn't he spoken before this i'm curious they do have the iconic hulk smash at the end i wonder if the reason i don't think it's as good is the fact that there is no character growth because especially just like going off of what we've seen so far based on iron man he grows so much as a person throughout that film you really see his change and that was what really like made it awesome we don't get any of that here so i wonder if that plays a role in like my dislike of this one i love that we see tony at the end that's it's iconic i made some popcorn and i have iron man 2 ready to go so here we go third marvel movie <laughs> This is only the third movie. I have to keep going. Here we go. You see, I'm getting tired. Iconic. I love Sam Rockwell. His phone has really advanced way past where it was in the first film. Scarlett Johansson. Woo. I was attacked. Iconic. The aesthetics of these scenes are fantastic. I love the technology in this movie. Yes. Brody is me. Hello. I just finished Iron Man 2. Exciting. There's my little drawing for it. That's fun. I enjoyed Iron Man 2. I thought it was fun. I didn't like it as much as Iron Man 1 because there wasn't as much character growth. I guess I'm really here for the character arcs and not the superhero things. No, I'm kidding. I love superhero things. I also just didn't think he was as good of a villain because it wasn't Tony's fault. Yeah, Tony's dad sucked. That's not Tony's fault, but of course, the villain needs to take it out on Tony because he's related to Howard. Pepper was great. She was running the company like a pro. I liked seeing more of Nick Fury. Uh, Natasha was really great in this role. Honestly, what a look with her hair and the tight ringlets. Mm, we love it. But I did like it more than The Incredible Hulk so far. I'll make a video ranking these soon. Oh, another thing is that I thought the car scene, I thought the scene where you attacked him on the on the freeway in the racetrack, I thought that happened way later in the movie than it actually did. For some reason, that was like the final battle in my mind. Also, like, iconic. I was being attacked. Same. Oh, I like seeing Coulson, but then he just, like, beast out to go to New Mexico. So, we'll see him in Thor now, because I'm gonna start Thor now. Okay, here we go. And for a time update, it's 4.15 a.m. I am tired. I am a true master of my craft. A true artiste. You cannot beat me. Here we go. Thor zero, taser one. It's Colson! Woo! Another! Why does that seem like a good move? You both fall down. He is not worthy! And this one, Thor, so I'm not pretending to die. It's interesting. I feel like there were many things I enjoyed. I really related spiritually to Darcy. I love Meow Meow. And I appreciated all the references to other things in the MCU. And I thought it was a very cinematic and like beautiful film. And I enjoyed the brotherly aspect. And I think it's what's interesting is that Loki is like ultimately redeemed in that like f in his last moments on the bridge which I forgot they blew up the bridge he says like I wanted to do this for you father like it was all for you and I feel like ultimately like that is a good motivation he's a good person there and you kind of see that he's redeemed himself there from the whole movie until you know he falls and then you know stuff happens I enjoy Thor like he was the main character but also like he wasn't I don't know, there's like a whole cast of characters, so it was kind of hard. Versus like other films where we're so focused on the main character, and this more seemed like a cast film. But also I got like really tired in the middle, so like I think I missed a little bit. It's a little vague. Oops. So I'm gonna take a 10 minute nap, and then we're gonna keep the ball rolling.
He's so tiny. It's so fun seeing it after seeing Tony's. Why hasn't Tony invented this? Why didn't this catch on? Other than the fact that this eventually like fails like right now. Like, why didn't Tony pick this back up? Peggy and Steve were the only ones that ran forward towards the grenade. Is this a test? I just finished Captain America the First Avenger and now I'm upstairs in my room because I figured I needed a change of scenery so I'm gonna lay in bed and watch. And I also figured that um, I'm not gonna make it through if I don't sleep at all so I'm gonna give myself 20 minute naps between each movie and hopefully that'll keep me awake during all of them. I really enjoyed Captain America. It's always such a fun film. And how he gets to enlist in the army and him and Peggy and him and Bucky and I'm just like all of the emotions. Steve is just such a good person, and it's great. Yeah, I just really like the relationships in this film, and it's really good, and it's a, in my opinion, this one and then Iron Man 1 are the two best origin stories so far in the MCU. I think they do a good job explaining them, and like, compared to the other three films that we've seen so far, those ones just have like the most solid plot lines and like the best character arcs. So. I'm gonna take a 20 minute nap and then we're gonna watch the Avengers! Ah, they're all gonna team up! I wonder what's gonna happen! <laughs> he gives him the ten dollars because he's never seen anything this crazy. Look to your elder people. And Tony are fighting, but like they just left Loki standing on the cliff. Who thought that was a good idea? Not me. He's my brother. He's my brother. He killed 80 people in two days. He's adopted. When did you become an expert in thermonuclear astrophysics? Last night. Me studying for tests. So I understood that reference. I'm proud of you, Cap. That man is me do, trying to get homework done and failing. No surprises. Ow! Hey! Nothing? What a great no friendship. Small. When Steve makes fun of Tony for not following the rules, but then he doesn't follow the rules either. Lucky They're all fighting. Oh no. Genius billionaire playboy philanthropist. Just you wait, Cap. Just you wait. The original fight. There was an idea. There was an idea. Stark knows this. Called the Avengers Initiative. The Avengers. Because if we can't protect the Earth, you can be damn well sure we'll avenge it. Yeah, right. Arc reactor. That's right, Loki. Performance issues. Woo, Bruce is back. That's my secret, Captain. I'm always angry. Iconic. This is the shot that started it all. Woo! The Avengers. Iconic. Unique God. This is the first time I see Thanos, and we're only five movies in. I guess six now, but yeah. It's wild. Shwarma! Stan! I just finished The Avengers! It's such a great film because you finally get to see the characters that you've grown to enjoy in the other films interact with each other and see how they bond with each other and it's just really fun. There's so many iconic moments in this film and I just remember loving it when it came out and it's just a great 
Mario Fun Time. Now we're on to Iron Man 3. He looks Captain just like Captain America's costume. <laughs> Happy first learning how to use technology. Wow, I'm so proud. Hello? This is <laughs> what? Yeah. Didn't Pepper in the last Iron Man say that she didn't want to be CEO, but like, why is she now still CEO? The girl is confused. Everybody needs a hobby, like making like 50 Iron Man suits. <laughs> That's right. Woo! I finished Iron Man 2. It was better than I remembered. It needs more happy, which I think I already knew that. Um, Harley is an adorable child. Um, it's really great to see Tony's PTSD. I think that really adds to his character and like shows that like it, it gives him humanity even when he's like really cocky. So now on to Thor the Dark World. Here we go. I can feel the righteousness. So I'll finish Thor The Dark World. I'll relate to Darcy spiritually and her interrupting the conversation with the date. I was like, me too, hun. So we're just forgetting that the Bifrost was destroyed. They have no mention of like fixing it, but it's just magically fixed. I guess that's how things work on Asgard. Cool, 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 cool. Loki's just really good in this movie. It's it's fun to watch. Loki fake died, obviously. Thor zero, window two. He keeps falling and then just like sliding down along windows. I don't know why, but they really love to do that with Thor. So that's a common theme I've seen. The end conversation Thor has with Odin about Loki is so ironic considering that Loki's pretending to be Odin. I'm just like, wow, we really out here. I liked this film less than the first film, but I enjoyed it more than I remembered. Not to say I don't remember enjoying it, I just think it's one of the weaker films in the MCU and I liked it more than I thought it would, but still not not great. Side note about Thor The Dark World. A problem I think I'm having is that it feels like not a Thor film. Like it feels almost like a group film and Thor is just kind of like the central guy. Like I get he is the central guy, but also we see so much of other characters that it doesn't really feel like a Thor, like it's all about Thor, which is why I think when I get to Ragnarok, I'm going to really enjoy it because it's like, you're really seeing Thor and like loving Thor throughout the whole thing. I think that's why the shit still sneezes. We'll talk about that later. But yeah, I think it's interesting because while it is obviously a Thor film, you focus a lot on the side characters as well, which is fine. I love having a fleshed out cast. It's just, it doesn't really make it like a Thor film because like, first movie you're kind of rooting like you're seeing all of loki and like the second movie you're seeing loki and you're seeing like yeah so yeah okay i don't know if that was coherent but like we'll see i guess have you left <laughs> why is there an exhibit in the air and space museum if he wasn't a pilot <laughs> it's bucky Ah. Captain America the Winter Soldier On your left, what an iconic start to a film I love, that's how we introduce Falcon He's just, it's fantastic Steve has a thing for just casually jumping out of planes and stuff With no parachute, he's just like, yeah, here I go I'm like, hun, carry a little bit more for your safety the line, last time I trusted someone and I lost my eye. Fury, what are you talking about? You trusted your cat. Blech. Not your cat, but like, you know, the cat. A weird question. I don't know if I brought it up when I was watching the film. But why is Steve's, why is Steve in, why is this, like, presentation thing of Steve and his history in the Air and Space Museum? Because he was not an Air and Space person. Like, I understand him being in a museum and, like, having information about him. But why, why, why choose the Air and Space Museum? I have questions. I also thought it was interesting how Hydra and that plotline continues throughout multiple movies when generally in some of the films that we've seen uh, only have like one villain and they're defeated and then it's over but then like with this Hydra just keeps appearing like cut off one head and two more grow back like it's really cool to see that progression. There's that moment when he's talking about the people who are special who they have to kill 
are on the list. And he names like Strange and Banner, and then he names like Kid from Queens and Valedictorian. And I'm like, as ah, Peter Parker. Also, there's a line where Falcon says, I do what he does, just slower, about how he like does everything that Cap does. And I'm like, that's so fitting because he then becomes Captain America. Ah, I love it. I'm with you till the end of the line. Oh my god, my heart. The Black Widow reveal of her being with like the fake face iconic. I forgot, and then I was like, wow, she's really out here fighting. I was like, it's Black Widow. Oh my god. Seep again jumps off a building because, you know, why not? I highly enjoyed this film. It was good. It was good. I, I see why this is people's favorite. Like, it's a really good film. It's just solid all around. And just, you know, like, Bucky. I love Bucky. He's just fantastic. <laughs> took the battery <laughs> nothing goes over my head i'm too fast i would catch it <laughs> the infinity stones yeah the best logic ever what beautiful imagery they have going on here the aesthetics of this, my heart. Oh my god, it's so good. Look at how pretty that is. Ah, uh, yes. I love them. We're still time crying. Groot just said we are Groot. I'm not okay. We're the guardians, We're of, the guardians of the galaxy. Guardians of the Galaxy. Uh, this is the most iconic soundtrack of any MCU film. If you disagree, fight me, you're wrong. I was dancing along to some of the film scenes because I was just like, the music, I'm here for it. So that was fun. Also the dialogue between a lot of the characters, it's just so much fun listening to them and hearing them go back and forth with each other. Logic, it's fantastic. <laughs> Learn some, get some, I don't know. And I love just seeing the progression of them coming together as a team, even though they're from such different like backgrounds, but like not really because they're all criminals, but just seeing them come together as a team and start to work together and then become friends, it's just fantastic. Uh, I love this movie, it's fantastic, yeah. It's a super fun time. Guys, stop, we gotta talk this through. It's a good talk. No, it wasn't. Did you hear that? He said we gotta talk this through and some guys, he said this was a good talk, and then like I said, no, it wasn't. <laughs> I'm dead. Excelsior. This is the best sequence of the movie. Yeah. Are you even pulling? Are you on my team? Just represent. Pull. All right, let's go. Come on, Cap. Come on, Cap. Foreshadowing. It's a word in an African dialect meaning thief in a much less friendly way. What dialect? Wakanda. 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 I don't follow what comes out of Wakanda. The strongest metal on earth. Vision has been created. Yes, queen. Her witch is here. Not to play. She ain't playing no games. She's an Avenger. It's the money shot. You had to ask. Here we go. Fighting as a team. Ooh. Wow, imagine choreographing that. That must be wild. Avengers! Avengers Age of Ultron. Wow, I remember not really liking, like, I remember being like, eh, about it when I first saw it. Some iconic moments. Language. Steve, you really out here calling them out, and then they would not let you forget. Tony, okay, a comment. Tony and Bruce made Ultron, and then they continue to just, like, blame Tony, and I'm like, it was a team effort here. Tony could not have done this without Bruce's help. I forgot that we met the dude, I don't remember his name, 
but the arms dealer guy who like is in Black Panther, but I forgot we met him before Black Panther. I saw him, I was like, oh my god, that's that guy. And I, it's, I was like, wow, I forgot that he existed in this universe before that. I was like, T, this is how he lost his arm. Like, there was so much happening there, and I just forgot. I thought he was a new character in Black Panther. Proves me wrong. <laughs> also, a thought that, like, I think I've seen on the internet before, but, like, Tony's the only one that thought of the team during his visions and, like, the nightmare visions. He's the only one that thought of the team. Shaking my head, like, obviously that's his world, and then for them to all just not care like they don't not care but like to just like blame him when he's just trying to do his best i don't know my thoughts hurt my brain hurts <laughs> my thoughts hurt i enjoyed seeing clint's family that was cute the natasha bruce pairing in this movie just seemed very fast like i was not getting those vibes from the first one i know it i think it was just because joss Whedon really wanted them to get together but because they don't have solo films before this because you know uh Marvel didn't want to do that. Our last scene appearance of them together was in the last Avengers film when like they had like they had chemistry sure but like it was like friendship chemistry because she like picked him up and everything but it wasn't like you thought they were gonna get together. Um, if anything based on watching the Captain America film two films ago I thought that Cap and Natasha would get together because like they kissed and then there was like a lot of flirting so that seemed like the obvious pairing. And then in this film, they really just went, Natasha and Bruce are going to get together. And I was like, okay. I don't know. It just felt like it came out of nowhere. But, like, I guess it didn't really. Like, there was that, like, setup of her going to see him in the first film. I don't It just kind of felt off a bit. I don't know. I forgot it was the Mind Stone that was in the Scepter thing. I thought it was just, like, an excerpt of a thing connected to the Tesseract. I don't know why, but that means that there were like two Infinity Stones just in the first Avengers movie casually. I just thought that that was connected to the Tesseract in my brain after all this time. <laughs> but then like once he revealed it was the Mind Stone, I was like, oh yeah, that's how they get it. Makes sense. But I really just thought it was like the Tesseract and like I was like, I don't know how they split up this power, but I guess. I guess I thought it was like a Tesseract weapon. I also appreciate the recurring minor characters. There's this one guy who works at S.H.I.E.L.D. and he has like the curly hair and he was in Captain America the Winter Soldier and he stood up to the bad Hydra guy and he was like, I'm not gonna like get the ships to go off because like, cause, like I'm following the captain's orders. And then he was in Avengers Age of Ultron so I appreciated seeing him again. I was like, well, there he is. Uh, <laughs> I remember you, man. Also, we finally got Vision, which was exciting. Him picking up the hammer is always just fantastic. Also, the scene where they all try to pick up the hammer and fail, and Steve, like, almost gets it, but you can see, like, he just doesn't. It's just so great. Like, the whole thing with the hammer this movie was great. I loved it. And it really sets you up for the next few movies, the next few Avengers movies. Oh my god, I'm so excited. Yeah, but I love Vision. I enjoyed seeing him get made. I guess not enjoyed seeing him get made because like that was the chaotic part of the movie but like it was fun seeing him finally arrive and then seeing him with Wanda like I mean not seeing them because like did they interact I don't know but like knowing that they're gonna get together is so tea and like how she was like looking and she's like oh there he is and then they were kind of like back and forth like oh you have destruction in your mind he's like happens <laughs> I am so tired so Ant-Man is next I think I'm gonna go take a shower and change. Whoops. I've watched 11 movies. I have 12 left, not past halfway yet. So I've been doing this forever. Also, just like a thought is that in the Iron Man movie in the third one, he says he's been away for 72 hours. I'm out here like, I don't know how he did it. Can he give some of that power to me? Because I keep wanting to just sleep. So I think I'm just gonna like take a brief like three hour nap and then I'm gonna continue after my shower. The girl needs to sleep just a little bit to recharge and then I won't fall asleep during the movies <laughs> because I'm worried that's gonna happen. There are times when I like drift off and then I come back and I'm like, I just missed that whole part of the movie. I need to watch it again. So we don't wanna waste time like that. Hey, how's your girl, man? Oh, uh, she left me. Oh. Yeah, my mom died too. And my dad got deported. But I got the van. It's nice. Yeah. You know that jobs don't come easy for ex-cons, right? Look, man, I got a master's in electrical engineering, all right? 
and it'll be fine. The most realistic series of events. Too often that you rob a place and they get welcome back. Because we just robbed you. Oh, I love them. You're stealing a smoothie machine, right? Two smoothie machines. Two smoothie machines. Oh, we can. Ant Man. I just finished Ant Man. I love Louise and his storytelling. Well, and also, like, what a great representation of a father daughter relationship that, like, isn't terrible. Like, the parent child relationship is just so cute in this, and he just wants to do everything for Cassie, and it's adorable. The training montage, beautiful. I loved it. I laughed so hard when he failed and everything. It was just great. Also, Anthony Mackie's cameo. I love it. The film just has so much fun with itself, so that you really enjoy what's happening, and it's just like such a fun story. Also, the effects, top notch. Um, I love Ant Man. It's great. Ant Man is so underrated. Gotta say. No one talks about Ant-Man as much as they should because it's fantastic and like Paul Rudd and just everyone. Oh my god, my heart. Okay, and on to Civil War. This is the best move of the whole film. Ooh, yes! I got it! He also sees what a man he is. Ah. This year's... Woo! It's my boy Peter Parker. Have you ever seen him? No. <laughs> Keep the list. Kenny Wooters, you know, I'm dead. You know, he kind of tried to kill me. <laughs> my fave buddy cops. I'll put a little coffee in it, but it should be good. Yes! Scott! What's the matter? Thank you. Don't shake your hand too long. Ah, oh, this is awesome. Captain America. I know you too. You're great. I love him. Jeez. Ah, uh, look, I want to say, I know you know a lot of super people, so... Thanks, Thanks for thanking me. <laughs> hey, man. What's up, TikTok? shot. It's Bucky! Captain America Civil War is such a fun movie. It's weird to see the Pepper Tony relationship dissolve like off screen. I don't know why that decision had to be made. It just felt kind of strange. Love seeing Spider-Man. I love Tom Holland, so that was great. The Air Force fight is quality. I love the like random talking that they do because I think it really adds to their characters. It's so much fun to see all the characters fight that we know and love and just the banter back and forth between them. It's just, it makes the movie. Cause you don't wanna just see them standing there fighting cause then that's boring, you know? Also, I feel so bad for Tony in the end because like, he just found out that Bucky killed his parents. And yes, I know, but it's not Bucky's fault because Bucky was brainwashed. However, the fact that, like, kept kept it from him, I don't know, that didn't sit right. I don't know why Cap didn't tell him. It seemed like a bad decision. Also, Zemo is probably one of the smartest villains out of all of the MCU. He actually got what he wanted in the end was he broke up the Avengers. So he got what he wanted, like he succeeded in the end, which is wild. Like my one downside was this movie didn't really feel like a cat movie. It felt like the third Avengers film. And I love the Avengers and everything and I enjoy seeing their interactions. It's really fun. However, since it's a cat film, I feel like he wasn't as much the central focus as the fact that there were like 10 other famous superheroes there. So it wasn't really a cat film. It was more just like Avengers 2.5. But like I understand they needed it to like break up the characters before Infinity War and everything. It just was kind of mm, about it. Now on to Doctor Strange. Well, the effects have come so far from watching The Incredible Hulk to this wild. Look at that. How do you even begin to start doing something like that? It's wild. Don't move. I have come to bargain. Doctor Strange. The hand imagery. 
wow like I knew it was there and like I knew the first time I watched it I was like wow but like still every time I see it every like it's just a constant theme throughout the whole film and it's amazing I love Benedict Cumberbatch just like a fact that I want to put out into the world if you did not know I do love him he's great going from the Hulk yesterday to this film today the words are not here because it's just stunning to see the advancements of technology and how CGI works. The CGI in this film and the effects are just mind blowing. You're like, how is this even happening? But like, it looks so real. It's so good. Wong is great. The cape is great. I'm a big fan. I wish there were more time stamps, which is funny considering he can control time. I wish there were more time stamps in the film because we see him training and then it just shifts to months later or whatever and I'm like what how much time has passed how much time has he been studying because then she makes him master of New York but I feel like he has not been studying for that long so I didn't see how quickly that could happen where are all the other wizards because it seems like there were so many people training and yet there's no one in that like New York office thing like what it was cool to see the time stone again I wonder how someone becomes Sorcerer Supreme. I don't feel like they ever address that. It's just like, ah yes, and then one day someone is Sorcerer Supreme. So I wonder how, because like I know he's Sorcerer Supreme, but how does he get there? We don't know. I love the end credit scene with Thor. I'm a big fan of Thor Ragnarok, so like we'll get there. I forgot about the ending with Mordo. I was like, oh, this is T. It's been, what, four years since it came out? And Doctor Strange 2 isn't coming out for like another year or two. That sucks. Final thoughts on this movie. Like the aesthetics, amazing. I loved it. The story, like uh, there are a few points where I was like, why? But I'm a big fan of this film. I think it's it's really good. So yes, on to the next film. I don't know what it is. We'll see. Okay, here we go. This might be the best sequence of the whole thing. I'm crying, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. Spider-Man Homecoming. I love the beginning. Spider-Man films always have a great beginning. I'm a big fan. And I just love this movie because we actually see that he's a teenager. He's going to school. He's having school problems. And it's just, I love to see it. I love Peter and Ned's handshake. It's fantastic. We stand. I know they made it up in like five minutes on set and it's beautiful. Also the vulture reveal, like I knew it was gonna happen, but still like it has you shook. You're like, oh yes. And then he's just gonna go pick her up. And then there's the vulture. Oh my God, it's for dad. We love Ned being the guy in the chair. This bothered me. I just seen Captain America Civil War. And in that, Tony says him and Pepper are having issues and she's not showing up to the conference and stuff and like the on a break and they're not dating and it's not going well. But then we see them in this and they're just they're just cool and he's thinking about proposing just randomly and they seem quite in love. So what's up with that Marvel? Why the sudden shift? Why where did that come from? Did we just forget about that? I would like answers as to why you would do this. Cause like, wait, like I know we can't see every aspect of their relationship, but to have that shift off screen, it's just, it's weird. It's a very cute movie overall. I'm a big fan. It's great. 
Darling, you have no idea what is possible. Okay, can I just take a, a quick FYI? I was just talking to him just a couple of minutes ago, and he was totally ready to kill any of us. He did try to kill me. Yes, he took me on many occasions. There was one time when we were children, he, he transformed himself into a snake, and he knows that I love snakes. So I went to pick up the snake to admire it, and he <laughs> transformed back into himself, and he was like, Yeah, it's me! And then he stabbed me. We were eight. <laughs> if we lose the shit, we're going to need to draw some. Hey, man. I'm cool. This is me. We're gonna jump on that spaceship and get out of here. Wanna come? <laughs> Your savior is here! Thor Ragnarok. What's up? Yes, I love this movie. It's one of my faves of all time in the MCU. A few thoughts. It's fantastic and hilarious, just like it always was. Thor 0, Windows 3. In every film, his face gets smushed against a window. I don't know why, but they have a thing for it. They just continue to like to do it. So I'm curious as to if in Thor 4, he's going to get smushed up against a window. Because if he doesn't, I will be upset and I will be protesting. I just love that it comes full circle with Loki and Thor's relationship and they just the brother they bond is just so beautiful and it's so beautifully shown in this film. One problem that I just noticed this time that I watched it, I hadn't thought about it previously. Okay, this is like a minor thing, like no one else is going to notice this, but I love the little mini short videos of Thor on Earth just like living his life that Taika Waititi did that were like between Civil War and this film and in the first one he goes and sees Banner and he's like hey what's up and then he's like have you heard about this war between Cap and Iron Man and he's like no and then he gets a call from Iron Man he's like hey you want to do it he's like no but Thor's here and he's interested he doesn't have to contact you send a raven like it's hilarious I'm a big fan however now I'm seeing it doesn't align with the timeline and it makes me kind of upset because they say that he has been in space for two years since Sokovia, which was in Avengers Age of Ultron. So that means he would not have been around for this time before Civil War. He would have been in space. So I still love this skit. I still think it's really hilarious. However, it doesn't match with the timeline. And I, it's just a sad point for me is that I noticed that. Thor finally seems like the main character in his own film. He is really the central focus, like we have the other supporting characters that are really well fleshed out. However, like all of the focus is still on Thor and like his mission, which is beautiful. It's just a really funny, heartfelt, epic space mission and I was here for it. Fantastic. Also, I thought this time watching it, which I've seen this film a few times now, I thought the Hella plotline flows a lot better than I originally believed. I think the back and forth between her plotline and Thor's plotline, while they might seem like kind of different tones and everything, I think that was necessary. And then to see it come full circle in the end where he, where Ragnarok is happening from the beginning, like it just comes full circle and it's beautiful. So that was necessary and they needed the push to force them to leave Asgard to go on this epic space mission. So I understand that like now I'm like more here for that tone shift. I just don't know like the first few times I was not like invested as much but now I am next film I I was such a fan okay thanks thanks for coming to my TED talk I love Thor Ragnarok yes. the real question is what are those <laughs> why do you have your this is my favorite shot of the whole film the world is flipped upside down now that Killmonger is on the throne Oh, it's so beautiful. My gosh, my heart. Wow. Just my film love and heart. Just loves it. Ooh. I only have two things to say about Black Panther. I love Shuri and just all of the other awesome women in it. And then Wakanda is just so inspiring. It's fantastic. Great film. Okay. Um, Infinity War. Here we go. Am I mentally prepared for this? No. Do I also really want to go to sleep? Yes. Here we are. We're going to start it. And us. <laughs>
I'm crying even though I've seen the next one. It's fine. I'm fine. It's fine. Captain Marvel! Avengers Infinity War. The sun better shine on Thor and Loki again. If it doesn't, I will riot and someone is getting some punches thrown at them. Because I cannot handle this. I am not stable enough for them to not have another moment. So the sun better shine again. Taika Waititi, I know I have a lot of faith in you, but you better do this, my dude. Okay, another fact that, I, that confused me about this opening sequence. How did the other Asgardians get to Earth? They said that half of the Asgardians survived. How did they get to Earth? Their ship was destroyed. Did Heimdall, like, maneuver all of them to Earth before Thanos got there? Like, I am confused by the logistics of this. How did they transfer from the spaceship that was burning to Earth? I would like some answers. Please give them to me. Every time Vision is stabbed in the back after walking with Wanda, I am still surprised. I do not know why. I know it's coming. However, I'm still shocked. I still jump like, oh my god, he was stabbed. Even though I know it's coming, I'm like, <laughs> it still freaks me out. Why give Thor his eye back? I don't think it's necessary for him. I thought the eye being taken away is very symbolic and it really connects him to his father Odin. So giving him back his eye kind of demolishes the significance of that move that they did in Thor Ragnarok. It seems like a lot of things they did just counteracted Thor Ragnarok, which was a wonderful film in my opinion. So I just thought that was kind of strange to give him his eye back when the whole point is that like, he doesn't need it. I love the Red Skull reveal. I think it's fantastic. It's a great callback to the earlier Captain America movies, which is obvious because it's Anthony and Joe Russo directing. So, like, they know Captain America. He's their man. What an entrance Thor has in the end. Coming down into Wakanda with Stormbreaker. It's fantastic. I love that scene so much. The end is still so sad. I still cried watching the end. I cried two times in this movie. And one time was at the end, my mom was like, why are you crying? You know they come back in the next film. And I'm like, it's still sad. I'm still connected to them over the course of all these films. And I just can't bear the fact that they're going to be dissolved. And then everyone around them is going to mourn. And it's just, I just, oh, it's so sad. Okay, on to the next movie. Ant-Man and the Wasp. We love the ant pretending to be Scott. It's fantastic. Luisa's stories, still top notch, fantastic. Hope and Scott, still adorable. Why don't more people talk about what an amazing father Scott is? I'll say it again. They have the best parent-child relationship and people need to be talking about this because it's so adorable and so cute and like, it's just so well done. And they just, like, it's one that's not filled with like child abuse and neglect and just hating your parents and like having this like terrible relationship. Like they have a perfect, it's beautiful. It's not perfect, but like, you know what I mean? It's like he loves her so genuinely and he ultimately shows his care for her so well. And so many other fathers in the MCU are just terrible parents. Why do we not acknowledge this? Also the whole truth serum thing, hilarious. Top notch, we stand. it's so funny. And just, it, it's truth serum, you know? You know? Okay, next movie. What am I watching next? Captain Marvel. I'm so excited. I love her. Miss Coulson. Goose is the best character. Look at him. This isn't what you're afraid of, is it? <laughs> That's a flood. <laughs> I love the cat. I'm not crying, it's fine. <laughs> oh, my queen. That's how Fury lost his eye! Woo! <laughs> I just finished Captain Marvel. I cried several times throughout this film. The intro is all Stan Lee and it just, my heart, uh I love the just Fury line where he's like, people just call me Fury. 
my mom will call me fairy, my kids will call me fairy, like everyone will. And it's fantastic because it just, it alludes to so much and you realize things over the course of the film. You're like, oh, there it is. The Cree plot twist is so good. Even if you already know the Cree are bad, you're still like, where is this gonna come in? And then it happens and you're like, the tea. She's just so powerful and it's so motivating to watch and just be like, wow, she's so cool. And lastly, I enjoyed seeing a different side of Fury. Usually he's just like this tough guy. And in this one, we kind of get to see a softer side of him before he becomes all tough and hardened as he is in all the other films. So that was cool. Am I mentally prepared for Avengers Endgame? No. Am I still gonna watch it now? Yes. Was this all just an attempt to get me to sob at Avengers Endgame? Maybe. I guess we'll see. I guess we'll find out. Language, Steve! So I just finished Avengers Endgame. <laughs> I don't know if, like I said, this was just an excuse to get me to cry about it, but you know, I cried six times during this movie, and except one of the times was for like 45 minutes during the whole battle sequence. <laughs> so like, I don't know if you can count that as one time, so might have been more than that. There's so many great quips in this movie and it just brings everything full circle and it shows the change in their characters and it's so beautiful and like, I don't know, after watching the whole MCU again, I really appreciate everything that they did to bring it full circle and oh my god, I start crying again. It's just a really beautiful movie and it like really wraps up all of the things that happened in the other movies and I know a lot of people have problems with it, but honestly, it's a, it's a really great conclusion to the MCU Infinity Saga, and I know it's technically not the conclusion because I know Far From Home is the next one, and I'm gonna watch that next, but this movie really, it really comes full circle, and I know when I watched it the first time, I didn't want Cap to go back and stay with Peggy, because I was like, he has this life in the future, and she has her own life, but like, it's just so perfect. <laughs> So, yeah, I really liked it. <laughs> what if you could tell? I was a big fan. And just <laughs> every time I think of the battle sequence, when it's just him against all of the people, and then they come through, and he's able to wield the hammer, and I just, <laughs> well, <laughs> it's fine. I'm fine. And Tony Stark saying, I am Iron Man, and is sacrificing himself. He's come so far from where he was in the first movie. <laughs> Maybe 
that's why I did this. <laughs> so I can really see their character arcs. <laughs> it's fine. I'm fine. <laughs> I'm gonna go watch Far From Home. <laughs> Cry some more about Iron Man because why not? <laughs> okay, I'll see you guys after that. <laughs> Spider-Man Far From Home. Ned and Betty are fantastic. I love them as a couple. It's just, it's so funny. I love seeing Peter and MJ's relationship grow. They're really cute and I just, I'm excited to see where they go. We stand happy. He's fantastic. He has been fantastic for all of the movies he's been in. So many. It's so great. The Mysterio reveal is everything. I wrote Magneto in my notes. That's how you know I'm tired. Both Spider-Man films have had great reveals of their villains like halfway through and you're like, this is fine. Like we know where it's going. And then like halfway, you're like, what, what, what just happened? And it's great. And it's like, it just flips everything you know on its head and it's amazing and I love it. Two questions though. What do we gain from the scroll reveal? I guess knowing that like Nick Fury isn't just gonna buy all of this, but still, what was the point of that? I feel like I needed more explanation. Also, why did we not get a flash reveal? That is the one thing I will remain upset about about this movie. Why did we not see Flash reacting to the news that Peter Parker is Spider-Man? Because I feel like he would immediately get on live stream and just be like, hey guys, what's up, it's Flash. I'm just here to say that I don't think Peter Parker is Spider-Man. You know why? Because he's a loser. He's one of my loser classmates. I hate him. Spider-Man, he's the best guy in the world. So I feel like they can't be the same person. And I think that would be amazing to see. And I'm like, why, why wasn't that the end credit scene? Because that's really what I wanted. That's what I was here for. That's what I was expecting. If I don't get his reaction in the next film, I'm gonna be so upset. Like, you don't know, I'm gonna throw hands with someone because that is all I need in this world. So what did I learn from this experience? The MCU films are amazing, that we already knew that. That's why I decided to do this in the first place. I'm very emotional about fictional characters. I guess we also already knew that, but I guess it's, it's confirmed, guys. I cry over fictional characters, it's fine. It's just amazing to see the stories that they've been able to grow and create over the years from 2008 to 2020, just to see how it grows and changes and how it's all connected and it's just amazing. And my brain can't handle it, but it's fantastic. It takes a while to watch it. It's 3,000 minutes long right now as of Spider-Man Far From Home. Like if you add all of the minutes up, it's 3,000 minutes, which is wonderful. I love you 3,000. And I don't know if that was on purpose, but you know, you gotta think it is with Marvel and it's just wonderful. I think they've really created a new genre of film. Not that this wasn't a genre already, but they've kind of heightened it so that it's become something more than its genre in my mind. I know some people say superhero films aren't like real films. They're just like fun movies that are like blockbusters. And yes, they are blockbusters, but they get people to go see movies. They get people invested in these fictional worlds and I think you have to give them some credit. And I'm just gonna get emotional about it now because I just watched all 23 of them, but it's such a, an amazing thing that they do. And it looks so wonderful. And I know it might not be cinematography, but it has some of my favorite shots in the world. It's so aesthetically beautiful. The CGI, the visual effects people who work on these films are so talented. And all the people who put hours of work into these films are amazing. And I respect every one of them. That is something I would love to do someday. Watching all of these and seeing the progress that has been made is astounding. So what we learned from this is that um, I really like Marvel. I think we already assumed that but I'm just confirming it now. I do love Marvel, it's a fact. Um, at one point, like midway through, I thought maybe I should stop. And then I was like, I'm already too far in. I've watched seven movies, I can't stop now. So here we are, I've watched all 23, it was great. I love the Marvel Cinematic Universe. I'm gonna be doing some videos, analyzing the movies and the characters and stuff like that. So stay tuned for that coming soon. Please like this video if you enjoyed watching me 
freak out over all of the movies. Please comment your favorite Marvel films and subscribe for more fun content from me. Hopefully not this sleep deprived in the future. I'll see you guys all in my next video. Should be up very soon. So see you guys then. Okay, bye. Your girl needs some sleep. That's all I'm gonna say.